Barbara. Welcome to Mess to Yes. You know, shared bedrooms can be a challenge under the best of circumstances, but with girls, you can at least add canopies, four poster beds in order to give them a little bit of privacy. Boys, you have to be kind of tricky, placing some like open shelves between them. I want to show you today a simple solution where you can create a boy's canopy that's also a TP playhouse. It could also work for girls. It's a very gender, gender, excuse me, neutral project. Say that five times fast. Gender neutral. We are going to start with an embroidery hoop that I got at Goodwill for $2.95. And I promise you that was not a fluke because I saw a second one at another Goodwill just this week. People are getting rid of these big things because they're getting them, you know, inherited in houses and nobody embroiders, so they just get rid of them. So pick them up whenever you see them because they're super handy. Then I have a nine foot by 12 foot drop cloth, and that makes a great piece of fabric for any large project that you have. It's cost effective, it's heavy duty, and especially in a boys room, it's got a little bit of that rustic look. We are going to hang this so you will need to install a hook into your ceiling. You want to make sure and have someone who knows what they're doing install the hook. It should go either into a joist or use a reinforced drywall thing, but even with that I'd be a little nervous. Look for a joist over the bed. Look for some kind of wood you can anchor it into so that when your kids pull on the tent or the teepee, no drywall comes crashing down on top of them. So we're gonna hang this from the hook using just some brass chandelier chain. And this is sold on rolls in the hardware store for like 98 cents a foot or a yard. We're also going to be installing some grommets into our canvas to give it a little bit more of that outdoors look and lacing that with some rope that we'll use to embellish some throw pillows and some other things too, just to give it a fun kind of camping look. And finally, I'm gonna decorate it, cutting out some leaves and just using a quick spray paint technique, connecting those with some free painted vines that are super simple. They work great on something like this to give it a little bit of a softer natural look. You can also replicate this on a wall mural anywhere you like. It's gonna be fun, let's get started. So we're just feeding the fabric in between the two parts of the embroidery hoop. This particular drop cloth has a seam in the back, so I know about where I should center it. Now, it may seem odd to you that I'm putting the screw part in the front, but it is the strongest, most reinforced part of the entire hoop, and that's where the kids are gonna be going in and out of the opening and I want to make sure that our hoop doesn't get broken by their use of it. So once you get it all the way in, I'm probably going to give myself, I don't know, five to six inches of extra at the top to gather up. It'll make it look kind of cute and it'll make sure that I have plenty of length at the bottom. So like I said, you just have to fuss with it. Now the reason I'm putting this in the embroidery hoop before I add the grommets is I wanna be able to lay this out flat once it's attached and place the grommets directly opposite each other. I would hate to go to all the trouble of putting grommets in and then have them be mismatched or have to torture myself by getting the top exactly perfect in order for them to match. So this way I just get this fussy part done and then put the grommets where they look good. Because let's face it, you could make this without them and it would save you, I don't know, about $15 if you want to make them without the grommets. But it wouldn't be as fun. It wouldn't look as rugged. And like you sewed it up out on the prairie because that's what you're doing right this is a fantastic project if you have older kids to have them make it themselves you can show them how to do it but other than attaching 
the chain to the embroidery hoop. There is no tools involved. There's, well, there's a hammer to hammer down the grommets, but they can do that. It would take an entire day or an entire afternoon at least for them to make this project on their own with your supervision. And then they're gonna have so much more investment in playing in it. And you will have gotten a whole bonus extra day of entertainment. I say definitely do that. Okay, that's about how I want it. You can see it's not perfect. I could make it perfect. I'm a perfectionist, but in this case, we're calling it a play teepee, and I'm calling it good. Okay, so once you have everything where you feel satisfied, tighten down your screw as tight as it will possibly go on your embroidery hoop. Now, if you're going to go and purchase a brand new one, the older ones are actually thicker wood, so just make sure, A, that you have a 50% off coupon because they can be a little spendy, and B, that you buy the thickest, most sturdiest, well, that doesn't make any sense, but the thickest, sturdiest one you can find. Okay, once this is tightened down as tight as I can get it, we're gonna put in the grommets. So I've got my first row of grommets in there and I'm gonna use the highly technical method of measuring, which is a hand span. I wanna keep my second row opposite each other. Now I've kept an overlap and I want that because I want this to stay closed. It'll help make the opening at the bottom. So I'm gonna mark oh, two places where I want it to be. Then I'm going to take the smallest side of the grommet, the one with the tall edge, put that on top and draw the hole inside with a pencil because I have to cut the fabric out wherever the grommet is going. The same technique applies if you're making um, huge grommets for drapes. You just have to make a larger hole, obviously, and use a different kit, but it doesn't have to be perfectly round because the grommet edge, the brass, is going to cover this edge and keep it from unraveling. But you do actually have to remove the material. Get it out over here. And once the fabric is gone, we're going to build a little grommet sandwich. So we start with the base piece, which is actually just a tool for hammering it together. Then put the tall piece on top of that, feed it through the hole, and put it down on something that you do not mind banging up. This is a workbench, but I still put an old cutting board that I do crafts on top of it to protect the surface from all my banging. So now I've taken the small ring, but the larger hole, but it's shorter, and fed that over the top. And there will be a tool in your kit. They sell kits with the tools, and then they also sell refills, so you don't have to pay for this tool more than once. Be sure you buy the kit that has the tool. It'll be a couple dollars more. You might be inclined to use this one. You have to have it in order to install them, but you only have to buy it once. You put that right in the middle and now I'm just going to use my hammer and whack away until it is narrow enough to hold the fabric. So the whole point of installing these grommets was to be able to add the decorative detail of the rope. So I want the rope to show the crisscross pattern on every single space. So I am going to put it over and under. I got rope that's small enough so that the rope can pass through the grommet just barely but two times. So I can put it through and pull it up on the other side and then crisscross it again. Pulling it, you know, tight but not too tight 
because when I hang it, I want it to lay, not be all bunched up. I could have done this when it was up in place. I just thought it would be easier for me to handle right here and I didn't want to pull it down or put any extra weight or pressure on the embroidery hoop as I'm working on it. So we're just going to fuss with it a little bit and then move up another set and do it all over again. And then when we get to the very top, we're going to tie a knot and then we will be ready to add the chain. So the last actual construction element of the TP is to add the chain to the top. I just have lengths of this brass chandelier and a carabiner to run through all of them and to hook into the ceiling hook or over a track in the garage, whatever you're attaching it to. So I have marked three spaces around here. I've already installed the other two. We're going to make the final hole here. I'm going to step over here to make it so I make sure I can do it. So that went right through both embroidery hoops and the fabric. Now the tricky part here is feeding this closed loop through there. Obviously you can't do that. So it takes two Pliers. Well, it takes me two pliers. Maybe somebody super strong could just bend it, but I can't. So I take two pliers and pull it apart. Then I need to cut a tiny hole right above it so that I can get it back through to the other side. Let me grab some scissors. So now we're going to make just a tiny slit. It doesn't have to have a grommet. It doesn't have to be anything. It just has to be big enough for this brass loop to go through. We're going to start on the back side, bring one side through the hole, and then we're going to take it back through the slit, and then using the pliers, we're going to clamp it back down together like I did over here so that it's strong enough to attach it to the ceiling. So let's take a look at this in place. So I, I took out the rope so we could hang it straight down and then we're going to dress it and fluff it up. If you want this a little fuller, you can add a second drop cloth. We're going to play with it and see what we want to do as, it, as we set it up for you. But right now we're adding some decorative touches with vines and leaves. So I am just free handing on there and it's very irregular and I'm okay with that. I want it that way. My vines are going everywhere. And then you add leaves in the blink of an eye. I folded these in half and cut two different sizes of leaves. And I'm just going to go around with a spray can and add leaves different places. Lightly, just dust it lightly. And we're going to add two different colors of green. And we're okay with the overspray because this is a very, very sort of half. Of course, we don't really love the dripping down the fabrics. We want to stop it from doing that. But you can make a bunch of these. These are just out of cardstock. So just keep switching them out, add what you want to add. You can put some um, accents in them if you want to with paint, but you don't have to. We're going to keep doing this all over until we have a fun looking decor. Let's take a look at it finished. Mm -hmm. 